about 15 minutes away right now before the first pitch. Lincoln taking on Omaha. Lincoln certainly has the advantage over the last couple of years. Won both games handily. Can Omaha get revenge tonight here in Lincoln, Nebraska? First year it is in Lincoln, Nebraska. As the last two games took place at Warner Park in Omaha. Lots of red in the crowd tonight. Lincoln's hungry to keep their winning streak alive. Their priests are working the crowd. Lieutenant Governor looks like he's getting ready to throw out that ceremonial first pitch. Father Corey Harrison catching. Well, we will see what kind of arm Lieutenant Governor Foley has. Crowd, as you can probably hear, gives him a round of applause as we are getting closer and closer to the first pitch here. Toes the rubber right handed, it looks like, John. And he goes after it, and that well, looked pretty good, quite frankly, Jeff. And... Maybe politics wasn't his calling. <laughs> So that was the ceremonial first pitch. Oh, we're not done with this yet. So no. Former state deputy for the Nebraska oh, Knights of Columbus, throwing out a father Brendan John. Kelly. Uh, beautiful day. Uh, Priest must have been praying pretty hard this week to get this beautiful, gorgeous day. So I just want to thank everybody for being here and uh, the Knights of Columbus for sponsoring this. But most of all, uh, uh, today, no matter who wins here today, right? Uh, vocation is the winner. So thanks for being here. Thanks for little note he gives on the real winner today being vocations for the diocese and the archdiocese. And I think he's going to try the underhand style. Going against what? Oh, Governor Foley. That's also going to be a strike. So two for two on that front. I don't know if they have anybody else coming up. Or... We're going to have the bishop of the diocese of Lincoln, James Conley, come out. He is going to be a participant in this game as well. I kind of believe he's going to be going to be rubber. Thank you, for everybody. Thank you, everybody, for coming out. It's a beautiful day. God bless us with. And so uh, let's begin with prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of this day, the gift of our faith, our families, and our friendship, and the gift of the priesthood. Be with us as we enter into this holy competition. Keep us safe, keep us from injury, and help us to give you glory uh, as we honor you on this, our Sabbath day, where we celebrate the resurrection of the Lord. We ask this through the intercession of Mary and all the angels and the saints. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Wonderful invocation there by the Bishop of Lincoln. John Sukup on emceeing tonight. And now I believe we're getting ready for the National Anthem. Fourth degree honor guard of the Knights Columbus leading us out tonight with the colors. Cross rise and bright. 
beautiful rendition of our national anthem there by Miss Ellen Suka. I think our MC John might have had an inside track there. I would imagine so. Uh, put that puzzle together, that would make sense, yeah. Talented family. being played on the big screen here at Haymarket Park. Famous Knights of Columbus being shown by on this video done by the Knights, including Babe Ruth, Vince Lombardi. Heroes from many recent events, the Chilean miners, 9-11. And asking all in attendance to join the Knights of Columbus. And that's a round of applause as we are getting closer and closer. First pitch here in Lincoln. Public address announcer now welcoming the crowd. I mean, essentially both dioceses rented out Haymarket Park for the entire day. A lot of Haymarket staff is here, and obviously the entire field is for use for both teams. Really fantastic event. And now they're introducing the lineups here. So we're going to see Brendan Kelly and the outfielder Tom Schultz coming out on the field for Lincoln. Job well done here. I'm putting together a group of odd and versus even innings. Getting a little bit of the rules pretty quickly here as we see Father Leo Seeker as well as Bernie coming out out there. Great clinch now. Father Dan Rayer, the Chancellor for the Diocese, following the Bishop as normal. <laughs> Father Mark Sizza. Superintendent down at Lourdes Central Catholic School in Nebraska City. Father Pat Barbic out there. Father Matt Rowling playing Rover. He also sits, plays dead. <laughs> Greg Doty now out there. Father Steve. Father Steve Mills over at Thomas Aquinas, the uh, Newman Center. And now I believe we're introducing our even number innings, that is Father Corey Harrison of uh, David City and Father Jim Meisenberg, Superintendent of Caius High School. Father Mike Ventry is about to be a pastor, I believe is now a pastor as of this week uh, in Paul, Nebraska. Uh, Father Matthew Eikhoff. Out in Bankelman. Father Denton Morris recently moved to York, Nebraska. Nebraska. Manager of the team as well. Ooh, Father Barvik playing both sets. There are going to be three players playing both innings. That would be Craig Doty, Pat Barvik, as well as Matt Rowling. And rounding out the game, Father Stoley, the speedster for the Diocese of Lincoln. And yet again, Father Matt Rowling. So that is your Diocese of Lincoln team. And uh, while Omaha is getting introduced, maybe talk about the rules a little bit because this isn't your traditional baseball or softball rules. Every inning, every batter will bat. One through ten, outs don't really matter. They do and they don't. Uh, but outs won't, won't really be recorded. So essentially how it's going to go is there's an odd number, an even number of priests um, for the Diocese of Lincoln. So during the first, third, fifth innings, there'll be a group of priests out there. During the second, fourth, and sixth innings, there will be a completely different group of priests out there batting. And again, 
It will go one through ten. All ten priests could theoretically get out. All ten priests could theoretically score a run. Regardless of whatever happens, the inning will end after that tenth batter. Um, one thing that's going to be a little bit of confusing is Omaha isn't really operating on the same um, roster as Lincoln is. They have fewer players. Therefore, they actually have a core amount of players that are going to play every inning and just switch off here and there when they want to get their reserves in. So try to keep you up to date as much as possible when there are changes and things of that nature. And obviously, some of these guys might not have been playing a ton of softball lately, so injuries could incur and all of that. So we will be doing our best to update all those lineup changes as almost through the Omaha lineup right now. Well, the Diocese of Lincoln has a priest as their manager. That was Father Nick Kipper. It is a lay person for Omaha, Dr. Brian Voithofer. He is going to be the coach of Omaha. And so everybody out on the field right now are your participants for the 2017 I-80 Caller Series. And again, John Kipper, Jeff Shinstock in the booth bringing you this game. Hometown Lincoln Diocese in the red. Archdiocese of Omaha sporting the blues today. This is not Democrats versus Republicans. This is <laughs> Omaha versus Lincoln. Again, Lincoln is red, Omaha is blue. As the PA announcer says play ball, and we are just about ready to roll here. Came umpire and crew taking the field. Three man umpire crew. And, uh, the Haymarket Park bleachers are rather full, especially if you're looking towards the first base side or your right side if you're looking right across the field. That is your Lincoln fans. To the other side, though, is the Omaha fans, and i got to say that's a pretty good turnout themselves. Now, as the Lincoln bleachers fill, maybe some of them just went over to the Omaha side. It's hard to tell, but regardless of whatever, however you want to think of it, excellent, excellent turnout tonight here in Lincoln. Supporting vocations in both dioceses. Great to see the folks out having a good time at the ballpark. Of course, a night at the ballparks, no matter what's going on, is better than any day at work, right, John? No kidding, Jeff. I believe it's going to be Frank Bombard out on the mound for Omaha. And looks to be Father Robert Kroll. Father Robert Kroll catching as, despite the fact that Lincoln is the home team, they will be batting first, it appears as the Omaha team is out on the diamond warming up. And softball rules apply in the sense that there are 10 players out on the field right now, so there's going to be four outfielders for Omaha. Now, they have a straight-up four-man outfielder. Lincoln looks like they might be a little bit more versatile. You never know what that Father Kipper is going to be thinking up in the dugout, but they're more playing a rover, so Father Scissor could be a fourth outfielder. He could be right in the middle at second base. It's really up to the manager. And I'm certain the manager's been strategizing for months. <laughs> he has been up late at night, writing down ideas. And so we'll see what Father Kipper has the offer here. As Looks like Father Bomber is just about all warmed up, and we're going to get our first batter. Father Brendan Kelly strolling toward the plate. That is exactly who it is, Father Brendan Kelly, out of St. Winsicott's. B, Nebraska steps in the right-hander batter's box, and first pitch is thrown. It's called for a ball, but regardless, we are underway here at the 2017 I-80 Caller Series. Father Kelly being patient at the play right now. 2-0 count. Father Bomber working out his arm early on. That one's good. That's ripped in the left, and we will have an out. Uh, nice play there by the left center fielder. Looks to be James Weeder out there. Father Kelly, a teacher at St. Gregory the Great Seminary, has time now to go contemplate what Aristotle thinks about that fly ball. Father Schultes. Father Tom Schultes now out there yet again in the right hand is batter's box. Pastor in Lawrence. Father Schultes is a big Angels fan. Check out his Facebook feed if you want to know how the Angels are doing. He's going to rip the second pitch in the left. Will it be caught? It will not. Father Weeder elects to let it drop, and that is going to allow Schultes to safely stay over at first base. Now 
we're going to get Father Leo Seeker. Father Seeker recently moved from Cologne, Nebraska to Shelby, Nebraska. He is now at Sacred Heart Parish there. And he is going to watch the first pitch go across for a strike. So Bomber may be finding his footing now on the rubber. Seeker again. He's Just deep it looks like there. He's going to rip that one. That's going to be hard for a base hit. Father Seeker hitting it over the third baseman of Omaha's head. Now we're going to have two on four. Father Bernie Kimena. Father Seeker with a nice line drive stroke there. He's really got it through the zone. Father Kimena, famous for his wild game feed everywhere he's been. Currently the pastor in David City at St. Mary's. Father Kimenow getting that, and he has a chance to deliver a couple runs here. That's going to be out right center. Will it be caught? It will not be caught. A pair in right field will allow a Coming possible home. play at the plate, and that really won't be much of a play. Father Venture is safe. Excuse me, that is Father Schultz is safe. And everybody steps up. One more base seeker to third. Kimenow to second base. Also assaulting the second baseman currently. Father Clinch, pastor down in Tecumseh, St. Andrew's Parish. Clinch ordained in 2011. Highest high school grad. He's going to hit a ground ball over to third base. That is fielded, and they're going to call him safe. They are going to say, despite an excellent effort from the first baseman, they are going to say his foot was off the bag. Father Ross Burkhalter, not too pleased with the call there from the umpire. But nonetheless, that's going to score another run for Lincoln and put this one at 2 0 at Seeker. Able to score. Bishop Conley steps to the plate. He signs my check, so I'm going to tell you how great his swing looks here, John. We'll see what the Bishop can muster up. Blooper! Will it be caught? It will be caught. Shortstop bobbles it, but ultimately is able to catch it. So Conley out. He was the sixth batter, now up the seventh batter, Father Rayer. Father Rayer, a great football player in high school, big Royals fan, chancellor for the diocese. Runners on the corners for Father Rayer as he's a chance to definitely deliver at least one run. He's going to rip it right to the shortstop and maybe could have been a double play. They're just going to elect to take out Rayer and allow Kimenow to score. That is the third run. That is the third run for Lincoln. So now it's 3-0 right now as one of the stronger players for Lincoln now heading to the plate, Father Mark Sizzle. Co-MVP from the first uh, Caller Series. Father Sizza can really get out there and run. Look out if he hits it in the gap. He's going to let uh, watch that first one go by. Probably a good idea as that bounced about a foot before we even had a chance at it. That's going to be a ground ball over to third, and that's a nice play there by the third base. That's a double play. Double now, remember, play. outs don't count, but Paul Hazen out there at third base takes out Clinch and SZA, and now all of a sudden for Lincoln, they're down to their last two batters. It's going to be Father Barvik right now. So nobody on right now. Obviously not the way Father Kipper drew this up, as he would have liked to have lots on at this point as we get towards the end of the top of the first inning. And we'll see what type of strategy Lincoln has with just two more batters up. Barbara going to let that one go by, so now 1-0 count. Brushing him back off the plate a little bit. He thinks he's crowding. He's going to rip the inside pitch over to the towards the second baseman, but Barbic's going for two. Messed up the fielding, and Barbic going to get a double after that maybe could have been seen as an error, but nonetheless, we'll call it a hit as he loses his hat. And that's probably what you wanted for Lincoln here. This is your last batter of the first inning, and Father Steve Mills. And so Mills might as well run until he's out, as the inning will end after this batter, regardless. 3 0 game right now, Lincoln on top. Father Mills is going to have a long stride. It shouldn't take him too long to get around those bases. First pitch in for a ball. 
Looks like he might be taking a right field approach. He's going to go towards the second baseman that is fielded. And they're just going to throw home, and that's a smart thing to do. Make sure that Father, Father Barbic, Barbic is called out, and that is going to do it. Well, they've got to make sure they retire the final batter as Mills will head home and be called out. So that's going to do it for the top of the first inning, and after that it is Lincoln 3, Omaha 0. But the Diocese of Omaha will be up next. Shaking the dust off there in the first inning. Everybody's getting ready. Omaha had a nice defensive round there. Yeah, they didn't do too shabby. We've seen the scoring get kind of out of hand sometimes for Omaha. So I think they'll take that 3-0 deficit, and they have a chance to obviously make that up right away. Thought they made a mistake not going for the double play, but that runner ended up getting doubled off a couple batters later after all. So now we'll see if they can tee off um, Bishop Conley, who will be on the rubber for Lincoln. Waiting off for Omaha will be Father Scott Schimler. Schimler out of Sacred Heart in Norfolk. And Schimler, a very, very new priest ordained this year. So he is getting ready to bat in his first I-80 Caller Series game. around the field a little bit. Looks like Conley is on the mound. Seeker is on first base. On second base for Lincoln is going to be Father Schultes. Playing third is Father Kimenow. Playing shortstop is going to be Father Rayer. And then Sizza is in a left center position in the rover spot. Father... It's hard to tell who's out in center right now, but I believe Father Mills is out in center. And then I know one of those alternates is another one of those outfield positions. And Father Clinch is also in right. Father Rowling doing double duty again. You said there were three, right, John? There are three players alternating, yes. And it looks like... Well, changing the lineup, Father yeah, Nathan Wint is going to lead off for the Archdiocese. Father Nathan Wint, he is a priest uh, at Creighton Prep High School. First pitch called for a strike. One and one count now. Bishop Conley, quick pace. Yeah, Conley really working quickly. Trying to throw off the hitters early on. Two one count right now. Bishop Conley still trying to find the strike zone as well. Now a three one count. Got to be careful. That one's going to be low. So we're going to see the first walk of the ball game as Conley. Blocks Father Nathan Wint. So that's going to bring up Father Michael Voithofer. Bishop Conley throwing left-handed. Watch his pickoff move. Father Voithofer hits it over to second base. That's going to be fielded by Schultz. Going for the double play. Rayer will get it. Nice scoop there by Father Seeker. And that clears the bases. Good start for the defense for the Diocese of Lincoln. Father Tobias steps in here. Tobias Leetak, and he's going to hit a ground ball over to shortstop. Father Rayer trips while attempting to field the ball, and that is going to allow Leetak to stay at first base. That would have been a tough play, even if Rayer would have been able to field that, as it was a slow rolling ground ball. And uh, the bases for softball are closer than baseball, so that would have been very tough for the Lincoln shortstop as Father James Weeder steps to the plate. Father Weeder out in Stuart Atkinson, Nebraska. And he Just past the shortstop. And he is going to hit it past the shortstop. The rover scissor is going to grab it and stop any more bleeding. So that's going to be now all of a sudden two on for Omaha as the fifth batter now coming to the plate in Father Frank Bomber. Pitching, pitcher for Omaha. So we got pitcher versus pitcher here. Bomber out in Howells, Nebraska as a Weasley vet being ordained in 1978. One of the oldest players on this Omaha team. 
Certainly the oldest in terms of being ordained. One-o -oh count, and now two-o -oh as pitch goes outside. Bishop Conley, a control artist from the mound, looking for his strike zone. That one is going to go in for a strike. It's now two-one count. That one is going to be ripped towards left, and that's going to drop for a base hit. We'll see if they try to take home. They don't. They elect not to test the left fielder and Pat Barbic. Lots of celebrities around the booth tonight, John. I see the vocations director for Lincoln, Father Robert Matias, is around. All sorts of people around and about right now. That's going to be a ground ball that goes to Conley. Conley bobbles it and can't muster a throw. It is now 3-1 as Father Latak scores for Omaha. Bases remain loaded. Pressure situation here for Lincoln trying to get an out. So now up is going to be Father Elliot Schwerer. And that first one is going to go for a ball. Father Schwerer out in Fremont, St. Patrick's Parish. So 3 1 right now. Father Schwerer is the seventh hitter, so there'll be three batters after him. So Omaha absolutely has a chance to take the lead to start off the first inning. That's going to be ripped right to Father Schultes. Makes it. Quick catch and almost gets out Father Bomber that second. Bomber was paying attention though and dove back over. Nice snag there by Father Schultes. Father Bomber definitely on top of things. So now this is going to be Father Robert Kroll, the catcher for Omaha, trying to deliver another run. That one is going to drop for a ball. Bases remain juiced here. Kroll, another priest out of Creighton Prep. He's going to avoid getting hit by a pitch there. Jeff, I think he would have wanted to be hit by a pitch in this situation. Uh, yeah, that one went behind him, actually. Free Time run. to step back. Maybe he's going for multiple RBI, RBIs here. I guess we'll see as another one goes inside, and he is going to get hit. And so that will be a free base for everybody involved for Omaha and a free run. And it's now 3-2. It's going to bring up Father Ross Burkhalter. Burkhalter now in St. Anthony's Parish in Columbus, Nebraska. And watch the first one go by for a ball. Still bases loaded here. One more batter after Burkhalter. And he's going to rip it right towards shortstop. Sizz is going to field it below him and throw it over to third base. We'll see what the call is. They're going to call the out at third. Omaha will score a run at home, though. So good and bad news there for Lincoln getting it out, but also allowing a run. And now it's all squared away at three apiece. Father Kimenog going for maximum damage there. A little bit of a collision. So now it's going to be Father Paul Hazing finishing things off for Omaha. Runners on first and second base. And this will be your final batter of the first inning. Gonna be a ground ball over to second. Schultes can't handle it. We'll see what Omaha can get here. They're scrambling for the ball. I believe that's Sizza throwing home there. One run will score for Omaha, and that will likely be it. As now we're gonna try to see some juke moves there from some Omaha Priest. That won't happen, and now the final out of the inning will occur. And so after one, Omaha trying to pull the upset, and they have the slim lead right now. It's Omaha four, Lincoln three. Father Dan Rayer with the pickup on the error there, throwing it to Father Kimenow, picking up two outs at home plate. All right, Greg, we're down here for our nice and dugout. Over here with Father Weissbacker. So we have some side games going on. Got to keep the crowd engaged as players on the field warm up and all that. It's always that way at Hemar Clark, right? So why is this such a big event? Why is such a hot group event? Again, we'll be switching over here to the 
even lineup for the Diocese of Lincoln. So you'll see the likes of Corey Harrison, Matt Eikhoff, Nick Kipper, Craig Doty, Chris Stoley, Matt Rowling, and more. Again, Lincoln sporting the red, representing the martyrs and the Holy Spirit. Omaha Archdiocese sporting the blue of Our Lady. Omaha's going to have a few lineup changes as well. Looks like they have a different pitcher on the mound. No, that's the same pitcher. Excuse me, Father Frank Bomber remains on the mound for Omaha, but it is a new header for Lincoln as Father Corey Herring Harrison out of David City stepping up. Even inning catcher for Lincoln. Father Harrison third year of ordination is beginning here. Assistant in St. Mary's, David City. Here's going to hit a ground ball over to third base. That is fielded cleanly, thrown over, and that's how you teach it, folks. One out as Omaha retires Harrison. Good hustle by Father Harrison to make it close. Now we're going to see Superintendent of Pius, Father Jim Meisenberg, step to the plate. Wearing number eight for the Beatitudes. drop for a ball as Bomber didn't pitch a bad first inning. He's going to remain on the mound, see what he can, if he can keep the one run lead for Omaha. Rip down the line to left. Will it stay fair? It will not. He got right on top of that one. Pretty good gap between your left field rover and the center fielder. Omaha approach is a little different than Lincoln. They play their rover a little farther back. Father Sizza kind of played a dual infield outfield role. Omaha goes for the straight left center fielder approach. Father Meisenberg takes a strike. One, two count. And it's going to be ripped over towards left center. Got to come up on that a little bit, and that will be caught. So two out, two out all of a sudden for Lincoln. Lincoln needs Father Michael Ventry to get something rolling here in the second inning. The Cincinnati kid walking up to the plate. Father Ventry's from Cincinnati, big Reds fan. Teacher at Lourdes Central Catholic School. Ventry swing at the first pitch, and that's going to be a base hit down the line. Diving effort by the third baseman. So Lincoln finally has somebody on as Father Nick Kipper getting ready to back and leave his third base coach spot. We'll see if anyone replaces him. But nonetheless, Father Matthew Icock head to the plate. Looks like Father Bernie Kibbenau is rushing out there to take his spot over at third. And he is Father, hustling. Father Matt Eikhoff, former director of the Family Life Office for Lincoln for many years. Now the pastor in Bankelman. So the first pitch to Eikhoff is a ground ball towards second. Kind of a tough play from the second baseman. He's going to make it, though. That will allow Ventry to get to second base, but Omaha doing a good job fielding, limiting Lincoln's runs. So that's an out for Ventry. Gonna, excuse me, that's an out for Eikhoff. That's going to bring up Father Denton Morse. Look at those shoes, John. Slick. He's trying to stand out. Morris out in St. Joseph's in York, Nebraska. First couple years of ordination he spent at St. Patrick's in Lincoln. Open those bright yellow shoes make him look faster around the bases. He takes the first pitch for a strike. Next one goes in and that's going to be a rip over to left center. Actually it's going to be more of a pop fly and a blooper at that gets past the left center fielder and it's going to allow Morris to get all the way over to second base. Left center fielder is James Weeder out there for Omaha. Just misplayed that one. And now Lincoln will have a chance to add a couple runs here as Father Kipper to the plate. Father Ventry stayed at third base. Father Kipper, also a co-MVP of the first I-80 Collar Series. Kipper could not play last year because he hurt himself in warm-ups. We're all happy he's out there right now, but he's going to fly right over to the second baseman. So Kipper can't get anything done. We'll see who can now for Lincoln as I believe Father Barvik comes to the plate. So Pat Barvik now trying to do the job of scoring a couple runs for Lincoln in the left-handed batter's box. 
That's going to be a rip right over that second baseman. He's busy, and he's going to beat the throw to second, allow Father Ventry to score. That's why they teach you to hustle, folks. Father Ventry just tore home. Looked like he stopped for a sandwich about halfway. And so we're now at the eighth hitter. As these innings really do move along. Father Craig Doty heading to the plate. 4-4 game right now. It is all squared away. Lincoln does have a runner at third base as well as first base. Father Doty, the pastor in Wilbur, works at the Chancery as well. And with that one go by for a ball, didn't quite get there as both pitchers still trying to find the strike zone early on in this affair. That one is right down the right field line. I don't believe it will stay fair. It will not. Good effort, though, from Doty. And if he can straighten that thing out, that could be good news for Lincoln fans. He was going to run all day. He was one step from first when it landed. On deck is Father Chris Stoley, and it will be Matt Rowling finishing off the inning for Lincoln. And right now, Father Doty still has unfinished business. That one going to go down the right field line yet again. That's even more foul, though, as it actually nearly goes into the crowd. The net stops it. Stay safe out there, folks. I don't know the rule. If a fan catches a foul ball, do they get to keep it, or are we low on softballs, Jeff? I uh, don't know what the budget looks like for this game. <laughs> Nonetheless, that's going to go past the second baseman in for a base hit. One, one, one run will score. Barber trying to get Russell. over to third. He does, and that's going to end up getting Doty over to second base. Exactly what Lincoln needed. 5-4 game now. The runners on second and third. Two batters left. Father Chris Stoley, a vocation out of St. Teresa's in Lincoln, now serves at Sacred Heart in Crete. The assistant to Father Major out there. Stoley, a younger priest, ordained in 2015. He's going to hit a ground ball over to short. First stop elects not to tag out the runner. That's going to be a bobble over at first base, and two Lincoln runs will score. The Diocese of Lincoln benefiting from an error. It's now 7-4 Lincoln with the final batter, Matt Rowling, out of the plate. Very aggressive running there by the Lincoln Diocese. <laughs> and now is the time to be very aggressive as it's the final batter. All runners will at least try to score. We haven't seen any close calls for a home run yet. I'm kind of disappointed on that front, but we're still early. There is an artificial fence out there for the outfield that's a little closer than what the real Haymarket Park fences would be. I don't think Father Rowling's going to challenge the fence, but he could challenge that big hole in center. There is a big gap there. That is where you'd want to try to go, as the corners are pretty well defended right now. It's going to hit it over to left center. It's going to be good for a base hit. We'll see if Lincoln can muster up a run. And can he get past it? He will not as he is called out, running towards home plate. Father Rowling is safe at home, is safe, he gets under the throw. Father Schiller are not too pleased at the call from Omaha side of things. What a slide by Father Rowling. What a way to finish the top of the second inning as the scoreboard's yet to account for it, but I believe it's now 8-4 Lincoln. As Lincoln has a better inning the second time around. There is that run. So 8-4. Lincoln doubled up right now over Omaha, but Omaha Bats is now coming to the plate. It's like Father Matt Eikhoff going to be taking the rubber. So remember, this is a different field than we saw from the first inning from Lincoln as well. So the same people you just saw bat are now taking the field. Maybe give you a quick rundown on who's out there. Corey Harrison, Harrison is catching. Father Meisenberg is playing third base. Father Ventry is playing second base. As Jeff mentioned, Father Matt Eikhoff is pitching. Father Nick Kipper is playing shortstop. Father Denton Morris is playing right field. Father Pat Barbic is over at first base. Father Craig Doty is in center. Father Chris Stoley is playing left field. And Father Matt Rowling is your rover. Looks like rolling right now, setting up right in that middle spot. 
past second base, kind of as a second center fielder. I suppose we'll see where he ends up. Father Sizzo was moving all over the place. We'll see if Rowling has a similar approach. Father Kemper, the manager, is also out at shortstop to bark instructions at Rowling if need be. Father Eikhoff appears ready to go. All warmed up, balls in. A little more speed out there for Lincoln on this even numbered innings. So Nathan went and again up to start the inning for Omaha. Wentz out of Creighton Prep, ordained in 2014. Like it must have been a little low there on that first pitch. When he batted in the first inning, he walked. And let a couple go by yet again. Went very patient batter. It is a virtue, John. <laughs> that one is going to go past the second baseman, Father Ventry, in for a base hit. Just a good job there by Wint finding a gap over in that area. And one on all of a sudden from off. Father Morris out in right field, coming up on that one. So Father Michael Voithofer now up yet again for Omaha in that second spot. He's out at St. Gerald's in Omaha. There's more and more fans packing into Haymarket Park. And that right side, it's hard to even find a spot to sit. That is the first baseline. Boythoffer rips one into left field, but that's going to be fielded by the Lincoln left fielder, Chris Stoley. That was right over to Stoley, so nice job there by him. And Judge that one just about perfect. Had him played in the right spot. Sure did. Now it's going to be Father Tobias Utak out of St. James in Omaha, and he was ordained last year. Batting left-handed. Looks like Father Rowling has shifted to the other side of second base. Short center field. So a couple balls around. Father Matt Eikhoff working out the kinks on, on the rubber. It's going to be a ground ball over to Eikhoff, and Eikhoff's going to underhand toss it right over to first base. Not the smartest throw there by first baseman, but they might have a chance to burn him at third. They will! One heck of a throw from Father Stoley to Father Meisenberg, and that's going to retire Wint. I believe that's going to be a one Three, seven, five, double play. You see about one of those a game, typically. <laughs> Don't score that too often. <laughs> Great throw by Father Stoley. And so now up for Omaha, Father Weeder. Father Weeder at dual parishes, St. Boniface's in Stewart in St. Joseph's and Atkinson, and that's going to go to Stoley yet again. That's going to be good for a hit, though. Not much Stoley can do there. As Weeder now going for a double, he will be safe at second base. Smart base running pays off there for Father Weeder. And now one on with the fifth batter for Omaha. That's going to be Father Bomber out there now. Pitcher for the Archdiocese steps up. Ground ball over to Father Ventry. Ventry fields it, throws it over to first. And Weeder able to take third base. He was being kind of coy over there at second, but used his speed when he needed to. And that's going to put a runner on third base now for the sixth batter, Kevin Vogel. Father Vogel out in Elgin, Nebraska, Rayville as well. He's the superintendent of the Catholic School District out there. Father Kipper out at shortstop, barking instructions on how Lincoln's going to play this with their infield in. Father Vogel has to step out of the way of that one. So can Omaha muster up a run? They're down four currently. 3-0 count here. I think they'll take base runners if they can get them. They watch that one go by. Oh, no, that is a walk, actually. That one was caught a little bit high. So, we're going to see Vogel take first base, and Omaha now going to see if they can finally get some more runs on the board. Have not seen a run in the second inning for Omaha with Father Marcus Necht coming to the plate. Necht 
out in O'Neill, Nebraska, St. Patrick and St. Joseph's. So a ball and a strike, one one count now for Father Neck with the runners on the corners. Infield's backed up for Lincoln now. It's going to be a passed ball, and Father Weeder caught sleeping a little bit. He might have been able to steal home. Actually, not sure if that would be allowed or not, but I guess we won't know. So 2-1 count right now. That is going to be good for his drag. So now 2-2 two -two count. We'll see if Eikhoff can maybe get a K. Then he's going to get a ground ball right to him. They're trying to turn two. They get the runner at second, not the runner at first base, and Omaha will score a run. Good turn by Eikhoff there as he got it on two bounces and immediately hit Kipper at second base. So now it's 8-5, Lincoln on top with Father Scott Schimmler to the plate. So Schimmler is... One of the final batters. I believe he's the eighth batter in this lineup. And that's a high pop fly. That's trouble for Lincoln. And that will drop as Father Stoley fields it. Neck now at second. Schimmler at first. So Omaha trying to load the bases before their final batters come to the plate. And this is going to be Father Ross Burkhalter. The ninth batter of this inning. So just one more after Bur Burke Halter. That's going to be Father Paul Hazing. So Omaha has a few chances here to at least get this one a little bit closer. And theoretically, Omaha could even take the lead after this inning. Put in pass ball there. Runner stayed at first and second. Burke Halter bloop over towards first. That's going to be fielded by Barvik. Caught that in foul territory. So now last batter of the inning will be Father Paul Hazen. Father Eikhoff making sure everybody knows, throw it home. Hazing just a very, not, he didn't hit that one very hard and that's gonna allow Lincoln to pretty much grab every runner and take them out here as they're all trying to get past Father Matt Eikhoff. There's two, and we'll see what Hazing can do, and no jukes from Hazing. Three outs, and that's going to do it for the second inning, and after two, it is Omaha. Five, Lincoln, eight with Lincoln coming back to the plate. for Lincoln, so Father Kelly, Schultes, Seeker, Kimenow, Clinch, Conley, Rayer, Sizza, I believe Father Rowling, and then Mills. We're all going to get for the Diocese of Lincoln in the second round in the third yeah. inning. And right now there are water balloons being shot into the crowd right now. Actually, I believe it's mainly t-shirts, but they're sneaking in water balloons here and there. So you don't really know what you're going to catch if you're out in the crowd. As Omaha finishing up their warm-ups.
So they're just wrapping up, and I believe we are going to have a live pitch before too long. We're not done shooting t-shirts and water balloons. At this point, that is what we are waiting on. That is clearly something, uh, it's a crowd favorite right now, the water balloon t-shirt combo. I think we're gonna go until they're out, quite frankly. Still waiting along for all the water balloons. I think they're just shooting water balloons at this point. There might be a few t-shirts left, but I think the kids out there can care less about a t-shirt. I think they'd rather be hit by a balloon. That was a t-shirt there. See how much longer they have of these. They might even be sending reinforcements. We'll see. This might not even be anywhere close to it. Oh, that is going to do it. Dream so, for a lot of the young kids out there, whether it's a water balloon or a T-shirt. Whatever you can catch, really. Father Brendan Kelly coming up for his second at bat here. So Kelly getting ready at the plate. Pitch from Bomber. It's going to be high in for a ball. So Lincoln up three right now, trying to expand on that lead. It's going to be a ground ball over to the third baseman. That is fielded, and an out is recorded. Nice play there from the third baseman of Omaha, Father Paul Heathing. One down for Lincoln. Father Schultz steps in, yep, looking to start a rally. Schultz getting ready for that as well, and he is going to watch that pitch go by for a strike. Schultz was able to score a run in the first inning. That one's going to be fouled off, so now all of a sudden no two for Schultz. We have yet to see a strikeout in this game. But there's first for everything, and Bomber doesn't like that throw from Kroll. It's like the sun got in his eyes there. <laughs> Shadows can play some games on you at this time of day. You sure can. That one is going to be fouled off as well. So Schultz hanging in there. He's Second right on top of these pitches, straight behind him, these last two foul balls. And as you mentioned, the sun can be playing a factor at this point. Seasoned veterans like this shouldn't bother him too much. And he's going to rip that one into center field. That will drop. And this could it's going to roll to the fence, Nick. So Schultz is going to head over to second, and I believe that's where he's going to like to stay. He nearly hit that one to the fence. He's right in the right into center field, really where Omaha had no outfielders. So the shift does not pay off there for Omaha. It's Father Leo sneaking out of the plate. Omaha adjusts their defense a little bit. So you're going to hit that one right over the second baseman. That is fielded cleanly for an out. Seeker, though, hustling. Made that a close play. Doesn't take too many steps for the tall and lanky Seeker to get over there, but nonetheless, he is out. Kimmon out out of the plate, the lefty for Lincoln. Oh, he was just fooling him on. He's going to the right end of the battered box. There is a runner on third base right now for Lincoln. Oh, Kimmon out. Try to make this one 9-5. Gonna drop for a ball. Next pitch goes in, and well, that's also gonna be a ball. Bomber really gets the high arch on his pitches. That should score a run. Hit hard in the left field, caught by the left center fielder. But as Jeff mentioned, it was. Hit hard enough to allow Kimmon out to tag up, or excuse me, that Schultz the to tag up. And the score is 9-5 now with Father Craig Clinch to the plate.
Father Clinch spent a summer in the Dominican Republic learning Spanish. And he's going to foul that one off into the Lincoln dugout. Clinch out into Cumsa, Nebraska. Can pick up a lot of baseball skills in the DR. <laughs> yeah, they, uh, they like the game out there. I'm sure that was problem. part of Father Kipper's thinking in his recruiting strategy for Father Clinch. He has an all-encompassing. He's really thinking all the advantages he could possibly get, and I'm sure he had a word with Clinch to make sure Clinch knew what he was doing when it comes to baseball, and the Dominican Republic stint certainly helps. That one is hit out in the center, right center, I should say, and that's caught by the right fielder. So Omaha doing a good job fielding this half inning. As all of a sudden we are to our sixth batter and, well, Bishop Conley. Conley flew out to the shortstop in his first at bat as the crowd gives him a warm welcome. Excited to see the Bishop recently put out a pastoral letter, Love Made Visible, encouraging more and more Eucharistic adoration throughout the diocese. A blooper could be trouble. It will not be. What heck of a catch there from Father Paul Hazing for Omaha. Caught that with his wrist. However you got to do it, I suppose. <laughs> Connolly can't seem to get on base. Willie May style over the shoulder catch, though. So now to the plate for Lincoln is Father Dan Rayer. It's going to be a ground ball right to Bomber. Bomber makes a real slick move. Excuse me, that is not Bomber. That is Father Wiesbecker. Wiesbecker makes a very slick move to field that one and record the out. Working towards the bottom of the lineup here for Lincoln. They need a runner on base. Sizzle might be the one to do that. Father Mark Sizzle out in Nebraska City, now to the plate. Pastor at St. Benedict's, which I believe was the first church in the diocese. Nonetheless, Sizzle grounds out. His Father Paul Hazen playing a real good third base over there for Omaha. Can't get a lot past him. With Father Matt rolling now up. This is the ninth batter of the inning. Rolling bats tenth in the even number innings, but he is the one of the alternates for the odd numbers as he fouls the first one off. Another international signing for Father Kipper. Father Rowling is studying philosophy over in Rome. Not too many Italians playing baseball to my knowledge, but I don't think they did well in the World Baseball Classic. I don't think they did. Pitch hits the dirt, so 1-1 one, one count right now for Father Rowling. He's going to watch that one go by as well. It will be Steve Mills, Father Steve Mills, batting last for Lincoln after Rowling. That one's going to go for a strike, though, so Rowling now has to protect the plate. 2-2 two, two count. I think he disagreed with that call, but all the same. Too. And he took a risk there letting that one go by, but that will be for a ball. So full count, 3-2. Battle between Wiesbecker and Rowling. He's going to swing at that one, and a good idea. That's going to go in for a base hit, hitting over to right center. Rowling thinks about heading over to second base. Good call there from the Rome student. And last batter of the top of the third inning is going to be by the Steve Mills. Father well, Mills has a big basketball background. Coming to have a conversation with Father Kipper, a third base coach and manager. You'd think they'd have signs worked out at this point. Kipper had all this time to think of that and still can't do the signs, but I suppose the conversation works all the same as that one is in for a ball. Another center field gap here. If you're looking to run all day like Father Mills needs to. Hard hit ball for Mills, but we'll see if Omaha can field it quick enough. There will be a play at the plate. Nice job there by Omaha Fielding as they're going to retire rolling and Mills. So not very successful third inning for Lincoln, just getting one run across. That leaves open an avenue for Omaha to potentially come back in this one as it's 9-5 Lincoln. This 
game, getting some attention from local media in Lincoln. I see Channel 1011 and Channel 8 down there on the field getting highlights from the game. Doing some interviews on the field as the even, excuse me, the odd number defense for Lincoln is warming up. So Conley back on the mound for Lincoln. Father Eikhoff having an interview on the sideline, so both of the Lincoln pitchers getting a workout right now. Certainly so. Father Nathan Wicks getting ready to bat yet again for Omaha, Wayne Knopf. Bishop Conley toes the rubber. Looks like he's ready to keep that fast tempo going. Remember, 9-5 right now, Lincoln on top. Omaha has a little bit of a chance to get involved. They did score four runs in the first inning, but... Second inning, Lincoln Fielder a little bit better, just allowing one run. Wink's going to start this one off with the base head as he hits it over in the right field. Father well, went three for three to start the game here. Or actually, I believe he took a walk the first time. That's right. That's right. He's been on base every time. So now Michael Boydhofer now heading to the plate. I'm just going to take a guess and believe his brother is the manager, Brian Boydhofer. We see a base hit there from Father Boydhofer, and that's going to allow Wink to get all the way over to third base. Now Boydhofer's trying to get to second, and he will. So Lincoln may be relaxing with the four-run lead, and that is not a wise idea. Is Omaha two on after two batters with Father Leetak now to the plate. Two runners in scoring position for Father Leetak. Looks like Lincoln's going to bring the infield in again halfway. Leetak swinging away. That should be an out for Lincoln as Seeker gets under it and grabs. He out. So now we're to the fourth batter, Father James Weeder. Weeder's made some nice plays out in the left center spot for Omaha. Let's see what he can do with the bat. And he's going to hit that one into right field, and that will drop for a base hit, and Omaha's going to grab it. at least one run, and they're going for two. Wint scores, as does Boythofer, and all of a sudden it's 9-7. to seven. Lincoln's defense is a little lax there. They played it right, but no sense of urgency to get that runner. Still six batters due up right now for Omaha, starting with... Father Tom West Wiesbecker. Father Wiesbecker out of St. James in Omaha. Ordained a priest in 1996. Crowd clapping along right now. Connolly's pitch goes outside for a ball. Father Kelly rolls it back to Conway to avoid the glare. is going to go for a ball as well and Father Kelly hustling back to get that pass ball Conley just avoiding the throw all together that glare must be nasty right now that's going to drop for a ball so Conley is going to walk Wiesbecker allow Weeder to go from first to second base and bring up Father Kevin Vogel the shadows are about halfway out to the pitcher's mound, so the ball's just coming out of nowhere, and then you lose it in the sun. That's a tough one. 
Ground ball. He is fielded cleanly by Rayer, and that's a nice play by Rayer. Getting the lead runner out, heading to third base. Out is Weeder. Nice catch there by Kimenow at third. 6-5 on the put out. Lincoln getting a stop here. So Looking Elliot for more Schwer. outs. Elliot Schwerer now up for Omaha. Schwerer a priest at St. Patrick's in Fremont. Looks like Father Kelly to Bishop Conley on the roll again. They've got this worked out. Yep, that's their system right now. Looks like Father Kelly might have a future in bowling. <laughs> Three zero count right now. Conley struggling with control. I don't know if the glare is playing a factor, but it can't help. That ground ball is gonna go right to Conley, and he fields that and takes out Schwer at first base. The runners do advance one base. So now runners on second and third for Omaha with three batters up. Robert Kroll now up for Omaha. Kroll a priest at Creighton Prep. Pitch goes in for a ball to Kroll. This could really break the game open if Kroll's able to get a hold of one here, potentially tie it. Or hey, if it's real good, could even take the lead. That one is ripped into left field, and that's going to allow him to score at least one run as Wiesbecker scores very astute outfielding. Father Matt rolling out there right on top of that. Bringing it in to Father Bernie Kimenow. He walks it over to Bishop Conley. So limiting the damage for Omaha. It is 9-8 now. Lincoln with that slam one-run lead. Runners on the corners right now for Father Ross Burkhalter. Two batters to go in the inning for the Archdiocese. Let's see what happens here. Priest out of Columbus watches the first one go by. Bishop Conley painting the corners. Going to swing away at that one. Kimenow trying to field it with one... And can't quite do it. And that's going to allow Omaha to advance. I believe score one run. Yes, one run score. So now it's 9-9. Nine, nine. And this is the final batter of the third inning, Father Paul Hazing. So Omaha has a chance to take the lead here. Father Hazing's had a fantastic game over at third. Looking to translate that into some success at the plate as well. Omaha has not led since the top of the second inning when Lincoln scored five. Bishop Conley being careful with Father Hazing here. I mean, you, you cannot walk the last batter, so Conley would it'd behoove Conley to throw some nasty pitches and try to catch Hazen reaching on something. That's no reach. That's a rip in the center, and Omaha is going to take a lead here as it gets past. Father Mills in center. One run scores. Two run scoring for the third. Oh, oh he is called out. I could have. I could have been tagged in the there. face. Him and out tags Hazing for the final out of the inning, but Hazing does his job. Scores two with a rip in the center, and Omaha. Now with the 11 to 9 lead as we head to the fourth inning. Things have really tightened up here. Good round by Omaha. See if Lincoln's ready to answer here in the fourth. Another video brought to us here. Catholic Social Services here in the Diocese of Lincoln. Catholic Social Services doing great work here in the city and the diocese. Many, many things under that umbrella. As that video plays, we're lucky here between innings to be joined by Father Gary Coulter, who is 
out at the retreat house here in the Diocese of Lincoln. Father Coulter, how are you doing today? Very good. A great game, great day for game. Great day to have a nice dog and a beer and just get out and watch some baseball or softball in this softball, case, huh? Yes, yes. It's always a great, uh, you see, meet a lot of people and, of course, the little competition as well between, between the priests, so. Great way to support vocations. What's going on out at the retreat house, Father? Well, in the, in the summer, we kind of have our longer retreats. So we've been having retreats for priests, and uh, we're going to have a couple eight-day retreats. This is our longest retreat. And, and so we kind of switch up our schedule, because during the school year, we do the weekend retreats for laity for, from Friday to Sunday. But So right now, we're keeping busy, and, but we, have our, we had a couple of priest retreats. We'll have a seminary retreat, and, and so always something to... Uh, I hope everybody can make that opportunity to t take that time to go on retreat. Now I have to ask if you're a little bit conflicted, Father, because you're at Our Lady of Good Counsel, and of course the Archdiocese is wearing Our Lady's colors. Oh. <laughs> well, I actually wore the neutral T-shirt, so I can cheer for both teams today. So, <laughs> uh, Wonderful video there for Catholic Social Services. Looks like we're getting ready here for the fourth inning. Yes. Knights of the Holy Eucharist out there on the field. They've done some help for you out at the retreat house, haven't they, they Father? They have, yeah. It's been a great help. It's, uh, they're, you know, one of the promotion things, Bishop Connolly's probably been promoting that adoration of the Holy Eucharist, and, of course, the, that's really what part of what the brothers do. In fact, we just had a really powerful Eucharistic adoration retreat last month, and so something we'd hope to do again because it's uh, definitely a, a great uh, gift to our diocese. So, Amen. And as I just mentioned last inning, Bishop Conley recently produced Love Made Visible, his new pastoral letter encouraging adoration throughout the diocese. Uh, really a beautiful letter. Yes. And, you know, really, I think uh, this game promoting vocation, supporting vocations, and, and there's no doubt Eucharistic adoration plays a large role in that as well keeping the, our, uh, you know, that source for vocations that are born there in prayer before the Eucharist. So, Amen. Well, thank you, Father, for joining us here. It looks like the brothers are having a spin around the, the bat race to the Divine Mercy. What is the game's called? Dizzy Bat, I want to say? <laughs> nice, fun game of Dizzy Bat. You know, the Divine Mercy out there really gives me some reminders as I was blessed to go with you to Krakow, Poland and go to the Divine Mercy Shrine itself. Yes. Wonderful opportunity. We encourage everybody in the diocese to consider a pilgrimage. Hopefully your pilgrimage goes straighter than the brothers are yes, towards yes. their target. The old blindfolds are working pretty well. They are. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> They're moving the picture around. That's not fair. A <laughs> little bit of cruelty here. He's getting a workout. Mm -hmm. Well, Father, we thank you for everything you're doing for the diocese and helping out out at Our Lady of Good Counsel. And... We encourage everybody to look at a retreat schedule out there and taking the opportunity to just step away a little bit from the busy schedules they have going on and spend some time with our Lord. Yes. Yeah, let's definitely come away and make that quiet time. And a great gift we have to have that retreat house available. So, Amen it is. Well, we're going to get back to a little bit of softball here. Uh, do you have any advice for Father Harrison as he prepares to step in? <laughs> Hit him far. <laughs> Truly good advice. Maybe yeah. next year you'll get to be the manager. Well, there you go. <laughs> Archdiocese of Omaha takes the field here, ready to defend. Father Harrison, followed by Father Meisenberg as we get started here in the fourth. Jeff Lincoln's uh, not really used to playing from behind. Uh, this is a team that has dominated Omaha the past few years, and 
Now they find themselves down two runs, so I guess we'll see how they react, how Father Kipper can keep them upbeat. Chance to really test that perseverance they, they get to preach to the faithful about. So Harrison takes the first pitch for a ball. As we are officially just over halfway through. And the ball thrown by Father Frank Bombert now out there on the mound. The even innings pitcher for Omaha. Sun continues to set in the west. The shadows are now just over the pitcher's mound. Good for the pitcher, bad for the rest of the infield. Certainly <laughs> so. And uh, really couldn't have asked for a much better day here in Lincoln. Temperature's not bad. It's not too humid out. It's a very ideal day to play baseball. Harrison rips it in the left. Well, he that really is, hammered one. That is caught uh, by the Omaha left fielder and Left center fielder was coming in strong. Thankfully, we didn't see a collision out there. Instead, we just have one out with Father Jim Meisenberg heading to the plate. Should there be a collision, I'm confident there are many holy oils in the in in the game tonight. Before I get attended by both dugouts. Yeah, you'd be in good shape if that is the case. Meisenberg takes a strike, feeling out Father Bomber. Pitch is going to be swung on and hit in the left center yet again. That is going to drop in for a base hit. Meisenberg gets it past the Omaha shortstop, Lloyd Hoffer. And so one on for Lincoln as Father Michael Ventry heads to the plate. Bless this last April to do a tech retreat with Father Ventry. Wonderful young priest. As he mentioned, he was out in Nebraska City. It looks like he's in Paul, Nebraska now. Recently moved. That one is swung on in the left center. That is right to the left center. Actually, he has to head a few steps forward now. And nice read there for the second out of the fourth inning for Omaha. That was Father James Weeder making the catch. Weeder's made a few nice plays out in the outfield for Omaha. Father Matt Eikhoff heading to the plate. Fresh off the interview circuit, Father Eikhoff now ready to move the runners along here for the diocese. Yeah, Bishop Connolly has now interviewed with both Lincoln TV stations, so he is getting the publicity. I think they interviewed a Bat Boy too, so they're getting everybody out over there. Every angle on vocations we can get. <laughs> nice, nice hit there rip. from Eikhoff over towards Weeder, and Weeder makes a very similar play, and he actually had to run a little bit quicker that time, but nonetheless makes the catch. And Meisenberg is just stuck there over at first base still. I'm going to call my shot here, John. I think Father Morris is going to move him over to third. And we'll see what those shiny shoes that Father Morris can do for Lincoln. Again, still down two runs, unfamiliar territory, as Lincoln has dominated Omaha the past two years. But Omaha trying to get their vengeance. Swung on and ripped over, and the infielders can't quite handle it. Meisenberg is going to stay at second. Oh, no, he's not. He's not heading to third as a bad throw will get Meisenberg over to third base. And, Jeff, you were correct. I'm not exactly that's exact sure how that was going to go, but hey, Father Morris hustles into second. However you can get it, you'll take it, I suppose, with Father Nick Kipper now to the plate in the sixth spot. Father Kipper, I'm sure not sh happy with his fly out to second base in the second, ready to... He's been thinking about it for a good half hour, and he makes up for it there with a base rip over in the right field, and Kipper Looks like he's going to drive in, second. too. Now finds himself in a near pickle, has to slide back over to first base, but Kipper certainly did his job with two scoring. Meisenberg as well as Morris scoring for Lincoln. It's now all squared away at 11 apiece. Father well, Kipper happy to pick up the RBIs. Father well, Barvik steps in wearing number one for the Trinity. So this is going to be several athletes in the bottom half of this Lincoln lineup, but Barvik going to ground out Kipper. So Barvik quick enough to avoid a double play, but that will be another out as the lead runner gone for Lincoln. Kipper hustling back. Barvik safe on the fielder's choice, no throw to first. Father Doty now to the plate. Doty, the eighth batter 
Also getting some work in Father Andrew. He slipped down on the field getting some some shots. Father Heeslip, the director of the Office of Religious Education as well as the Office of Evangelization here in the diocese. Wanting to get the sights and smells and sounds of the game field level. Nice up there from Doty, but unfortunately it goes to Father Neck right out there in right field and he makes a nice play. I have to say Omaha is fielding yes. really well. That is, in past years, that would have been a, maybe a double or a triple, but... And you know Neck was ready to play when he brought the baseball pants. <laughs> you're wearing those, he might have just bought those for this game, who knows. Father Chris Stoli's had a pretty couple of good innings out in left field. Made some good throws out there as well. Let's see what he can do with the bat now. With Barvik still sitting there at first base. And Lincoln would like to probably get out of this inning with a lead. A tie would not be the greatest situation as Omaha has both teams, quite frankly, have scored in every frame. Grand ball over to Shorts. Bobbled by the shortstop. We'll see if they can make the play. They cannot. Stoli just too fast for him to throw. So Lincoln doing what they need to do as we wind down towards the bottom of the lineup. Had a shot, I think, there at second base getting Father Barbic, but he chose to look towards first instead. So this is Matt rolling now to the plate, the lefty. He's made some nice plays in the outfield as well, and that's going to be good for a base hit. Bloops in front of the left center fielder, Barbic. Lincoln sending him. And he's going to score easily. I don't know if this is the most advised move. As Doty is going to be called out. Excuse me, that's, yeah, that's Stoley being called out. And then Rowling tries to jump over the uh, fielder, and that is going to do it. Father well, Rowling throws the bat down in righteous anger, but the call is correct. Quite an athletic correct. play. Nice play there by Omaha, limiting the damage. Lincoln scores three runs, but they find themselves up by one, which usually in baseball terms is a pretty good scenario, but Omaha really has an opportunity to take advantage of that now as... They scored six runs last half inning, one run the inning before, and four in the first. So Omaha can score in bunches. Father Matt Eikhoff, the flame-throwing right-hander for the Diocese of Lincoln, steps to the mound, ready to limit the damage here. It is important to note that last time when Omaha did score that one run, it was this, it was this field out for Lincoln, and so this might be the stronger defensive unit for Lincoln. I guess we shall see, but... Ten runs given up by the odd inning players for Lincoln and just one so far for the even numbers, although we'll have a better idea after this inning. Father Matt Eikhoff warming up yet again. No injuries, I believe, we've seen so far. Always good. Got a bunch of old guys playing ball for the first time in a while. That can always come, uh, come up, but nothing so far. Sponsor for this inning, John, is the Ten Commandments. Try and keep yourself always following those. Of course, honoring our fathers, Father's Day last weekend, and honoring the fathers in Omaha and Lincoln with this wonderful game supporting vocations. The last two years we've played in Omaha at Warner Park, and now we are in Lincoln at Haymarket Park, and maybe it's just an advantage to be on the road as Lincoln took the first two in Omaha. Now Omaha played much better in the game in Lincoln, although Lincoln does have that slim one-run lead. Excuse me, 12-11 as we head to the bottom of the fourth. And not a lot of action out in the berms in terms of the crowd, but there are a lot of kids playing out in the playground area at Haymarket Park. Definitely a nice park for kids in that nature. Lots to do for everybody. Went now to the plate for Omaha. He's had a good day at the plate. Two for two with a walk. Lots of kids here. A tribute to Humane Vitae. It's just a great day for Catholics in southeastern Nebraska, northeastern as well in the Archdiocese. Beautiful day here. Absolutely. Eikhoff backs Father Went off the plate again. Yeah. Nice patient hitter. Yes, he certainly is. He waits for his pitch, and he took it there, although that goes right to Kipper over at shortstop, and Kipper records the out-move problem. 
Strong arm throw there from Kipper. Gets his man at first. It's going to bring up Father Michael Voidhofer out of Omaha. Father well, Voidhofer, I understand, is quite good at the guitar. And as I was saying earlier, I, just a hunch, but his brother, I'm going to guess it's his brother, Brian Voidhofer, the coach for Omaha. Good hustle there by Fathers Harrison and Barvik on that foul ball. It's going to drop in between them. Like to see them getting after it like that. Absolutely. Like they're chasing after souls. That is a, maybe not the smartest pitch to swing at, but Lloyd Offer went after it anyway, and it is an out as Barvik fields it nicely. To bring up Father Latte. This is as good as Lincoln has done against the top of the order here for Omaha. This is a pretty strong defensive unit out there for Lincoln. Both defenses have been pretty tight today. Mm -hmm. Always going to have a high scoring game in slow pitch softball. Especially when outs don't really count. You got to bat every player in the lineup each inning. Beautiful view of downtown Lincoln Memorial Stadium just in front of us. Yeah, you really do get a very nice skyscape when you're batting. See Memorial Stadium, Pinnacle Bank Arena, and the taller buildings of downtown Lincoln. So that is going to be a walk as Mother Eikhoff struggling with control of that batter. Allows Lee Tech to get over to first base for Omaha, and Omaha trying to make that one run comeback currently. With Father James Weeder to the plate. Look for Lincoln again to go for that lead runner. Father Eikhoff throws it behind Father James Weeder. I just behoove Omaha batters right now to be patient as Eikhoff trying to work out the strike zone currently. Several balls thrown in a row. 3 0 count currently between Eikhoff and Weeder. After Weeder, it will be Father Frank Bommert to the plate. It's going to be a ground ball over to Barvik. Barvik bobbles it, and that is going to be E4 on the plate, yeah, or we'll E3. Call, we'll call that an error on Barvik, and two on now for Omaha with runners on first and second. Father Bommert now coming to the plate for Omaha. Bomber out at St. Elizabeth and Seaton's in Powell's, Nebraska. Every hitter counts at this point in this close game in the later innings. Omaha certainly would like to leave this inning up. They have the lead and they're going to be in solid position. They're being benefited by Icon struggling right now, although he does manage a strike. It's going to be a rip over to Kipper. Kipper touches second, now heads over to first base. Bomber now out. Nice catch there by Barvik on the sharp throw. And Omaha did manage to advance one rather, one runner, Bob Wietak over now to third base. But if, taking out two runners is certainly a good thing if you're Kipper. If you're scoring at home, 6-3 on that double play. Kipper right on top of that. Strong throw again. Pastor out in Cortland, play baseball at Pius High School. Father Kevin Vogel now up for Omaha. Ground ball right to Father Matt Eikhoff. Eikhoff checks the run over at third before grabbing the out at first. So Lincoln defense now picking up. And they have not given up a run yet in this fourth inning, which is exactly what they needed with that slim lead they had. Father Nick now to the point for Omaha. Neck made one heck of a play and right the last frame. Watch that one go by. So 1 0 count right now. Runner on third base. There will be three batters for Omaha after Neck. Neck's going to bloop it over in the right field. That's going to drop for a base hit. 
and score one run for Omaha. As Father Letak scores, and that nods it at 12. Father Morris charged that one hard, but got it on one hop. Looked like he could have ran all the way home with it. Interesting defensive alignment right now for the Diocese of Lincoln out in the outfield. Outfielders pretty much straight up with your rover in the left center playing shallow. Shamor hits it over kind of towards third. Kipper does a backhand stop and a lot of play from the shortstop slash manager. Limiting the damage right now for Omaha, retiring the lead runner. And now just two left for Omaha in this inning with Father Burkholzer now up nine hole here. Really, that was a great play in the hole by Father Kipper. Good range. Great arm. Father Eikhoff seems to have control back. Nearly. As I see that. <laughs> Good timing there as he nearly hits Father Goldfucker. 1-1 one, one count. Swung on towards Meisenberg. Meisenberg fields it, throws it over to second. Eventually makes a nice catch over there and takes out the lead runner yet again. So Lincoln doing an excellent job fielding this inning. Just two runs given up in two innings by this defense for Lincoln. Father Paul Hazing coming up now. Fresh off, I believe he ended the last inning with a home run. Is that right, John? Uh, he scored every, the, the runners in front of him scored, but he was unable to score. Okay. But Hazing did hit a, an excellent, we'll call it a triple last inning to score two to finish off the inning. Exactly what you want from your 10-hole hitter. Father Eikhoff with some wind-up theatrics out there. Not sure what's going on there. What I would bet is since he can't walk this last hitter, he's trying to pull any tricks he has. That time is swung on by Hazing, and that's going to go. It's going to be lost by the center fielder. I believe that's Doty out there, and he's now unable to find it in the fence, and that's going to be a home run for Hazing. He goes triple home run and back-to-back -back innings to close out the inning. And that gives Omaha a 14-12 lead. Quite a shot there. And Father Doty, I believe, lost that in the sun as well. It was hit almost right at him. Hard to see out there this time of evening. And so we're done with four. And it's Omaha 14, Lincoln 12. And Lincoln were the heavy favorites heading into this game. And... They again find themselves down two. Lots of t-shirts again being flung around by the Knights of the Holy Eucharist. Some other volunteers doing the same thing. Crowds going crazy. Watch out for water balloons. Those guys are sneaky. Good sports out there, both dugouts watching the t-shirts. Slash water balloons. We've got a good one here at Haymarket Park. Yeah, this has been a change for past years, which have been wrapped by Lincoln. Archdiocese putting up quite a fight currently with the two-run lead. And I think they're doing it mostly with defense, John. They certainly are. I mean, I mean Lincoln's been hitting the ball, but we've seen a lot of good plays out in the outfield, and those oftentimes are the troublesome ones. I mean, you point to what we just saw 
to finish off the inning for Omaha. I mean, little defensive errors in the outfield can really cost your runs. Omaha has not made as many as they have in the past year. Lincoln needs to put some runs on the board here. Father Brendan Kelly walking towards the plate, getting ready to lead off the inning. Back to the odd number lineup for Lincoln. This is their third and final time they'll be out there. Question, I don't know what would happen if it's tied. Would they go an extra? That's a good question. Just knowing Father Kipper, I can't see him settling for a tie. So I think he would be arguing for it for an extra inning. Father Kelly getting a good look here. Takes ball three. Three and zero count for Father Kelly, the pastor in B. Professor at St. Gregory the Great. Apparently it wasn't 3-0. Yeah, the, the scoreboard had 2-1. So they're being... No. Oh, that is going to be called for a strike. So I see a full count. I haven't seen too many of those. We have not seen a strikeout yet tonight. We won't hear as Kelly grounds it over to Wiesbecker. And Wiesbecker throws it over to first to retire Kelly. Now it's going to be Father Tom Schultes. Before hearing the call, Father Schultes, of course, was a, a CPA, a certified public accountant. Could use his help up here keeping the books and the stats. Absolutely. We have, we have foregone doing that. As he pops that one up over to left field, that's going to be close being foul, and that will just be foul. That's probably less than a foot from the line. We're going to try it all over again. Good hustle on both sides. He straightens that out just a few inches to the right. He'll be in good shape. Father Schultz is now in Lawrence, Nebraska. He was at St. Patrick's in McCook for the recent change. Uh, pitch is thrown. Schultz is going to foul that one back towards the catcher Kroll for an out. Schultz is clearly frustrated. He didn't even drop his bat there. Two up, two down for Lincoln as Father Leo Seeker strides towards the plate. You can see patience just in the way he walks. <laughs> and pretty much any chance for an athletic opportunity, Father Seeker takes advantage in his days from Pius. He was always playing in faculty games and things of that nature. Now he's out here yet again. Father Seeker also an avid chess player. Interesting batting stance he's got going there. Very closed stance. Ready to pounce. Here comes the pitch. Swing on. Grounder over to the shortstop. Shortstop bobbles it. The throw is late. Seeker beats it out. Great hustle there by Father Seeker. Running down the line. And it pays off for him as Father Kimenow strides to the plate. Ready to move his brother Priest over. So again, it's Lincoln down two right now, 14-12. Kimenow is, I believe, the fourth hole hitter. He is the fourth hitter at this inning. So Lincoln has a little bit of work to do with just one on. He really passed up on one he could have driven there, I think. Took a strike, getting his timing. The old one is ripped past the pitcher, past the second baseman. Seeker with a wide turn at second. Almost cost him there. He got back quickly. So now two on for Father Craig Clinch. After Clinch, we will have the Bishop. And then Father Rare, Sizza, Doty, and Mills. Father Clinch, another pious grad stepping up here. Wearing number 20. Hits that over the shortstop. Yet again, that shortstop sure busy. He makes a nice play over at third to retire Seeker. Father Hazing with the good scoop over there. Father Voidhofer over there at short for Omaha, making those plays. Uh, Bishop Conley, he is 0 for 2 currently. We'll see if he can finally record a hit. He can control sure user right now with runners on first and second. Batting right handed while throwing left. Father Rowling cheering on the good eye of Bishop Conley over coaching first. 
Ground ball over to first base. That one is bobbled by the close play, and Conley will be out. So just kind of bad placement of where that one went. If that was hit elsewhere, he very well might have beat out the throw, but nonetheless, he managed to move the runners over, and Lincoln needs those runners to do something as they are now to the seventh batter of the fifth inning. Now they're near collision over at first, but Bishop Conley in holy deference gives way. Now this is grounded over towards second base. As Rager is out, but he does score Kevin out. So now it is 14-13. Omaha now just with a one-run lead. Father Sizza to the plate. They need something big from Sizza. Sizzle looking to return to the heroics of his first I-80 collar series. Patiently takes a strike here. Wearing the high socks today. Rips it over to a shortstop. And that's a nice play there from Voidhofer being patient. Checks the runner over before taking out that speedy Sizzle. Beating by about a half a step. So Lincoln's almost certainly going to need a big sixth inning as we are now forward to the tenth batter, excuse me, the ninth batter. Father Doty looking to make up for that struggle in center with the Sun. And bring Lincoln into a tie ball game here. At the very least, you got to tie the game if you're Lincoln. Preferably you'd like to maybe grab an extra run or two, but we shall see as that's a pop-up in the right could be trouble. And that will drop in for a base hit. The outfielder there, Schwer, had a little bit of trouble fielding it. One run will score. And nice job there by Doty getting all the way to third base. That's very important to get it third with just one more batter left. Just a single now from Mills would put Lincoln ahead. Of course, Mills will be running the whole time. Kipper has a quick word with Mills. I think it was something to the effect of swing away. As you mentioned, Jeff, it's any base hit's going to score that runner from third. And if Mills can manage to score, that's just gravy, but you got to make sure you get that one run in. Tie ball game into five. Right over to Voidhofer. Voidhofer throws home. And that is a dropped ball. Nice slide there from Doty. And now Mills is going to throw off the hat. And this time, though, Wiesbecker is going to be able to hold on to the ball and take out Mills. But that is now a Lincoln lead. And that's a heroic slide. Doty's not wearing pants. That's a short Legs for a slide, that might hurt tomorrow, but right now it gives Lincoln a one-round lead. There's no shortage of effort here, especially on plays at the plate. Now we are at the midway point in the fifth inning, and considering we're playing six innings, no better time than to do the seventh inning stretch, or the fifth inning stretch, I suppose. Take me out to the ball game being played. Hey, Justin. So now it's going to be up to this Lincoln defense to minimize the damage. When the odd numbers have been out, Omaha has scored four and six runs. So can they keep it down? Now, you don't necessarily have to hold them scoreless, but you got to hold them low. You don't want to put all the pressure on your sixth inning lineup. Bishop Conley's ERA is taking a bit of a beating in his first two frames. Crowd's getting a little crazy here. Close ball game. Great fun out here for everybody. We tried to keep staff. We kind of gave up. We paid some pieces. Pieces for Omaha. Maybe Stoli for Lincoln. Yeah, blue redder, a blue winner and a red winner. I kind of like the way he stole it, or uh, third base has been playing. And he hit the like, play. Who are you talking about? Uh, third base blue. Uh, that's been Hayes. No, that wasn't yeah, Hayes. Yeah, it's Hayes. It is, yeah, he's definitely their, their player of the game. I, again, I kind of stopped taking stats. but Their 10th hitter, that just, yeah. yeah, he's been their best player by quite a bit. If it's Lincoln, yeah, it's probably Stoley. 
stolen. Kipper playing short, maybe. Yeah, he, he also does much with a bat, but. Okay, I'll come back. Uh, it could change. Yeah, if it, I mean, obviously yeah, Lincoln could do some stuff. Point games. Right. Have it written on a piece of paper by the game's end, I'll be out. Sounds good. Sounds good. Thanks, Dick. Father Went coming up, about to lead off his fifth frame here. Ever patient Father Went, looks like he's going to take a uh, ball again. That was close, a little high. Went has been dominant, leading off for Omaha and rips that one, but unfortunately for Went, it goes right over to the left fielder of Lincoln. Nice play there by Father Doty. So that's going to bring up Father Michael Voidhofer. Voidhofer lately especially has made some nice plays over at shortstop for Omaha. Shallow outfield for Lincoln. Interesting alignment with the rover right there in the sun in the left field side of second. It was the wise spot though as it went right to the shortstop. Rayer trying to get it over to Seeker at first and it was a low throw. Couldn't quite dig it out, Father Seeker over at first. So Voidhofer now on man. Gonna bring up Father Lee Tech. Lee Tech for Omaha. Father Kelly right on top of that foul ball. So that adds a strike, a one count. The lefty on lefty matchup. That's gonna go for a strike as well. So Conway finding that strike zone. And again, we have not had a strikeout yet. We still have an inning and a half to go. Won't have it here though. Ground ball over to third. Kimenow fields it, but got to it a little bit late. That was a slow roller. It would have been hard to get anybody. Yep. So two on now for Omaha with the fourth batter coming up in James Weeder. Weeder out in northeast Nebraska, kind of in the O'Neill area, Stewart and Atkinson. Battery for Lincoln we have here. Pitching moral theologian to philosopher. Bishop Conley looking to find the strike zone again. Make him hit the ball. Crowd backing him up. That one is popped up and going towards the rover. And we have a big collision with Imanow and SZA. SZA keeps it somehow. I don't know how he held on to that ball. Imanow went way out of the range to go after it. You got to applaud the hustle, but he looks shaken up. I mean, he Indicate just, on those fly balls. He just barreled SZA there. SZA doing a great job holding on to that one. Not sure how he did it. If SZA a little shaken up, a little slow walker. Kevin now clearly still a little hazy. Nonetheless, we are at the fifth batter right now, Father Tom Weisbecker. Two, two on one. for Omaha. Lincoln still with that one run lead as Weisbecker watches that one go by. I'd be interested to see if this has hit coming out of his way, how quick he is to field it after that last collision. If, that's, if he is slow, my father Caper might consider putting in a ringer. Weisbecker being patient right now. 3-0 count. Close pitch there. Bishop Conley steps to the mound. And that is going to be good. Well, that is going to be ball four. So loading up the bases is Omaha for Kevin Vogel. This is a definite chance for Omaha to put a lot of pressure on Lincoln. So you're in the bottom of the fifth, 15-14 game right now. And five batters to go for Omaha in this frame. That one is going to be popped up and Going to force the center fielder back. He is going to catch it. Kind of a swinging throw. At least gets it over to Kelly. And Voidhofer elects to stay at third, not tag up. He probably would have got there if he would have ran. But nonetheless, Lincoln makes a nice play there. And we are now in the seventh batter 
Strong throw right. home, but it was offline. However you got to do it, I suppose. So Schwer now trying to do it. He pops it up himself. This is going towards the rover SZA. SZA catches that one without somebody running into him this time. and he Throws it to third where there's nobody there. So that's going to allow Omaha to score with Voidhofer running home. And now it's 15-15. So SZA makes a nice play. I think he wanted to throw to Kimmon out to ensure the runner would score, but miscommunication allows Omaha to score a run. So three batters left now for Omaha. Runners on the corners right now, first and third base. Omaha's done a good job with runners in scoring position to getting those guys in. It's going to be a ground ball to Connolly. Connolly stops it. We'll see if he can get the runner at first. He won't even throw. Sets up the force play anywhere. If he didn't stop that one, the runner from third almost certainly would have scored. So still a solid defensive moment with Ross Burkhalter, the priest out of St. Anthony's in Columbus, now to the plate for Omaha. He's the ninth hitter, so just two more for Omaha. Owen goes in for a strike, and of course, Father Paul Hazing, who has tripled and homered in his last two at-bats, is on deck. Father Burkhalter himself has had a good game, but Lincoln could really use an out here. 1-1 one, one count right now. That one is going to be taken by Burkhalter. Ball two. This is in his rover spot behind the shortstop. That one is short for Conley, so now 3-1 count. The last thing Conley wants to do right now is to walk a batter. And that would score an Omaha run and give the Archdiocese a lead. But that is what he'll do. Burkholder takes first base. So now it's really going to get interesting here with the 10th batter, Father Paul Hazing, up to the plate. It's 16-15 Omaha. Bases are juiced as the outfielders back up. SZA moves from that hybrid infield outfield spot to a pure left center position. Shortstop Ray are still playing pretty far up. Ready to throw home if needed. Coming out back. And he's going to hit it over towards left field. And that will be caught. Now the runner's trying to score, but I don't think they tagged. And so I don't believe any of them will actually be able to score. So that is going to end the inning. Big catch out there by Father Rowling, holding Omaha to a one-run lead. We go to the sixth inning here with a great ball game going this on. This is absolutely what the fans come here to see. I mean, obviously, you come out of here, Priest plays some softball, but you get a good game like this. This is fantastic. Just a one-run lead as we head to the sixth inning. And the odd number Priest for Lincoln are done, and the even numbers now getting ready to take the lead here and if Lincoln can't muster up a run which they have each team has scored at least one run every inning but if somehow they can't Omaha will win big frame here for the red team Harrison leading off for Lincoln just going down the lineup that we'll see this final inning for Lincoln it's Harrison Meisenberg Venturi Eikhoff Morris Kipper Barvik Doty then some, then Stoley, and then Roland. The good news for Lincoln as we go to this last inning is this has been their stronger unit, both hitting and defensively, so they need to score a few runs and then go out and hold them in this tight game. The Evens had scored five runs in the second, three runs in the fourth. So eight of the 15 runs for Lincoln, the Evens can't account for. So over half, in just two innings. Fans really trying to get excited as they continue to throw shirts out there. I don't know if they have any water balloons left either, but nonetheless, they look about ready to get rolling in the final inning. Oh, they still have water balloons. They're over near the Omaha side now. Less fans over there, but still a pretty prevalent crowd down the third baseline.
Knights of the Holy Eucharist over there under the guise of throwing t-shirts have unloaded a bunch of water balloons on the crowd on the third base side. Holy Innocence in this case they are not. And here we go. The sixth inning just about ready to get started. Father Corey Harrison, the David City. Preet stuck to the bat. Takes the first pitch for a ball as that one hits the plate. Beginning here, and Father Harrison starts it out patiently. And almost an identical spot, but that one must have been up a little bit more. That called a called strike, so 1-1. One, one. Ripped in the left. And that's a collision from the Omaha Priest, but again, the person who catches it manages to hang on. That's Father Kevin Vogel out there on the left catching it. Tough night for Father Harrison. Twice now he's lined out or flied out to fairly deep left field. So he's been on it, but just not on it enough with Father Meisenberg now to the plate. And that good Omaha defense. Meisenberg able to get a base hit down the line in left field. Meisenberg, the superintendent of Pius High School, has been excellent in baseball over the past few years. Maybe takes a few pointers from the team. Father Mike Ventry strides confidently towards home. Looking to move Father Meisenberg over. So Lincoln absolutely needs a run. They would like more than that. With a one-run deficit currently. Ventry hits it over in the left center. Can it be caught? It will be dropped. Good effort there from Father Leader, but unable to come up with it. Now there's two on through three hitters for Lincoln with Father Matt Eikhoff now coming to the plate. Father Meisenberg wisely played that halfway. Gets into second base safely. Some Lincoln fans getting a little excited right now with potential rally on their hands. Four-hole hitter Eikhoff. Takes the first one for the ball as they're starting to pump tunes. Former pastor in Brainerd, Nebraska, happy to be back on the eastern part of the diocese for a day. That one is hitting the center field. That's going to drop for a base hit. That's Almost exactly, perfect placement. Exactly what you want to do if you're Eikhoff loading the bases for Father Den Morris as the athletes getting ready to bat for Lincoln with Morris, Kipper, Barvik. Dodi Stoley rolling up. That's a pretty good rescue your order if you're Lincoln. Certainly the powerful part of the order that could drive in these runs. They've done a nice job of table setting here to set us up in the sixth. 16-15 yet again. Omaha still on top. Ripped down the third baseline. That's going to score at least one run as Morris. Although then we have, ooh, Venturing nearly makes a mental mistake stepping off the bag, getting there just in time. Umpire over at third calls of safe, so bases remain loaded for Father Kipper. It's now 16 all. Father Kipper's had a great game on defense, looking to make his name on offense here. He was able to get a base hit last time, but then he was called out heading to second on a fielder's choice. Bases loaded, tie ball game in the sixth. Kipper gets it past the second baseman. That's going to be good for a base hit. Venture able to score. And we're going to have another play at the plate. Eikhoff scores himself. Kipper does a little dance over at first base. I think actually he hurt himself. Morris advances to third. Father Kipper shakes things off. He's kind Avid of runner. With his hamstring. He pulled his hamstring before the game last year. He was unable to play. I'm not sure if he tweaked it yet again, but nonetheless, he gives Lincoln a two-run lead, 18-16. Barvik steps in. Ball. Father Kipper still appears to have some tenderness in the leg over there. We'll see if that'll affect him trying to score. It's going to be a slowly hit ground ball. Kipper's got to avoid it. Barber going to close ball. play at first. Out. Yeah, that really was close. He does advance the runners, but Barbic clearly frustrated by himself. Father Bernie Kimmen now coaching first over there. Was about ready to argue the call and then remembered his own calling. Still a two-run lead now for Lincoln. Runners on second and third. It's Father Doty up right now. Three more batters. For Father Doty the with the big hit last inning. Ready to keep that train rolling. Father Doty was one of the three Lincoln players that got to play in one odd numbered evening, inning. Mm. 
Kemper Stone working for his pitch. Kemper Stone messing with that leg over at second base. That can be a crucial run, but really, it's all about defense, not for Lincoln, as they have the lead. That's going to be a base hit, though, for Doty yet again over in the right field. Father Neck bobbles it out in right field. Kipper hobbles home. And then Doty kind of gets nearly caught in a pickle, but I think he's able to get back safely. So it is now 20 to 16, Lincoln. With Big Father. hit there for Father Doty. Absolutely, that was a crucial one. Doty now alone on the base pass at second base. Father Chris Stolen now to the plate. Toward center field, that might be a tough play with the Sun. It's ultimately caught. That's going to advance Doty to third, and he thinks about running home. And so, still 20 to 16, we have our final hitter of, well, the game for Lincoln. And certainly the final hitter at the top of the sixth inning, Father Matt Rowling. Father Rowling with the earlier slide into home. The throw beat him, but he got under the tag, and then he tried to leap the catcher a couple innings later. So he tried under and over. We'll they had a little conversation there with the catcher to start the at-bat. <laughs> and he's going to swing at the first pitch, and that's going to be a blooper towards left. Will it drop? It will. It's going to be tough for him to score. Easy score there from Doty. He goes back to home just to make sure he's got it, and Rowling's going to try to go by third base. He cannot. But nonetheless, Lincoln able to score six runs in the sixth inning to put them up 21 to 16. Can they hang on to that lead? There's one more frame, and we'll know for sure. Another video here in between innings from the Knights of Columbus, this time with the theme of patriotism. Quote from Thomas Jefferson, uh, you got FDR talking. What an exciting game here. Lincoln comes in five runs up here in the bottom of the sixth. Omaha, who's had just a great day. This is going to be a tight one as we go to the very end, John. Absolutely. You got Father Matt Eikhoff on the mound to close things out for Lincoln. Omaha's going to be pulling out all the stops. Do you remember, though, this Lincoln unit has defended very well. Father Kipper, kind of the defensive captain out there. We'll see how the leg's doing. He seems to be all right. He's moving his legs a little bit more than usual, clearly trying to stretch it out. We got Father Matt rolling as the rover. As the video is finished up, I don't see water balloons or t-shirts this safe between innings this time yeah. here for the kids. At this point, you don't need any more side games. We got a pretty good game here with just one more frame to go. And Omaha can still win this one, but they're going to have to get them bats rolling early. And I still don't have any explanation if we do get a tie game what happens. Seeking clarification on that as we're Hopefully not going to deal with it. Let's have this in one by either side. Yeah, that last inning for Lincoln is exactly what they needed. That was their biggest run output of the game. Six runs. So six out of the ten batters able to score for Lincoln. That's exactly what you want. They just got to make sure Omaha doesn't do the same thing. Well, and Omaha comes with their table setter, Father Nathan Went, who is just, it seems like he's been on base all night long. Omaha has scored six runs, one inning. That was the third. So it, they have proven they can do it. That was uh, against a completely different defensive unit, though. 2-0 count on Father Went, who's got to have an on-base percentage of 1,000. Thank you. I'm almost certain Wint has not been called out this game, and he's in pretty good shape right now. 3 0 count. They'll take the walk, and if you're Omaha, I mean, you want your base runner, especially early on. They'll take any way you can get on. 
Kipper out calling defensive signals from shortstop. Moving his rover over right towards the middle with Voidhoff. And Voidhoffer's had a nice day. Batting second for Omaha. Omaha is being very patient here. They, they're going to get a strike call before they swing, it looks like. Right over to Father Father Ventry. Ventry with a nice snag at second base. Ooh, nice job by Went not going right away, or that could have been a double play very easily. That line drive had double play written all over it. Good snag. So Omaha can't afford to get too many outs as they need five runs and one out already for them. If five Omaha priests are retired, that will do it. Bob the lead tack right now to the plate, the lefty. Inside pitch, caught a ball, so 2 0 -oh count out. To our final frame of the game. That one also called high. Eikhoff maybe struggling with control as we wind down. Maybe arms getting a little tired. That's good for a strike. 3 1. It's going to be a ground ball towards Eikhoff. Eikhoff can't handle it, but Kipper can at short. That's going to take out the lead runner, Went. Something Lincoln could definitely use. Another out. And now comes James Weeder. Leg clearly affecting Father Kipper as normally he would have grabbed that, stepped on second, and gone for the double play. So good play by Lincoln. Father Ventry, good job covering the bag. And that's popped up right towards Kipper. He doesn't have to move very much to grab that out. Things looking really good right now for Lincoln. Omaha's going to have to get base runners to make this work. So Weeder now out. It's Father Bomert now. Bomert, the fifth hitter. Six batters left for Omaha. They have one on, so they can't afford to lose many more. <coughs> like off trying to establish the control yet again. Two out count. That's going to be a ball as well as and a pass ball. Three all right now. Omaha certainly. I mean, if you're by the bomber, you might just not swing and hope for a walk. Needing every base runner you can get that is what's going to happen. Bomber's going to take his base. By the Vogel coming up. Vogel, the superintendent for Elgin Pope John. He is at St. Bonavis and St. Bonaventure in Elgin and Riva. Pinch runner coming in for Father <laughs> Vomert over at I, first. I feel like that pinch runner is not a priest. Just a hunch. He seems a bit young. <laughs> so they're going to allow him to pinch run for Vomert, make things a little bit more interesting. That is going to be for a ball. So 2 0 -oh count. Yeah, that was just the first ball. But the bat. Nonetheless, Vogel now setting up. Thought about that one, but ended up being a ball in itself for now 2 0 count. That one's going to be swung on towards Ventry. Ventry able to field it. Takes out the runner heading to second. Kipper elects to hold on to it. No throw made there. Good job for that young man coming on to pinch hint. No pressure, young man, but you've already played in a softball game meant for priests. So <laughs> we'll see whether the call comes. Lee Tack able to get over to third. Runners on the corners for Father Nick. So this is the seventh batter for Omaha. They can essentially afford to get one more out. Everybody else would have to score. Math starting to look good for the Diocese of Lincoln, the two-time defending champions. Eikhoff coming strong with the strikes. Certainly Lincoln had to be challenged much more this year than past years. This has certainly tightened up a bunch. Kipper under that one. Kipper grabs another out with Neck being retired and Omaha has to score every run left now, including the two on base. I will say this, the way Father Paul Hazings played today, I wouldn't yeah. put it past them. 
Got to get a few guys on in front of them yet, though. Kind of similar. Up for Omaha. Yeah, that is a good point. I mean, Omaha, that's kind of their secret weapon. Hazing in that final spot. That one is popped up. That could be interesting with Harrison and Meisenberg coming at each other. That was a near collision. This time it's dropped. It does go foul, but we could have had another ugly one, Jeff. Continue to tempt us towards an anointing of the sick yet. We're Lots of contact out there today in this fun ball game. One one count right now. Shimor catches a break. Now let's see if he can take advantage of it. And he does a similar pop up, but that could be a tough one. It is dropped. That one is dropped by rolling. One run will score in Father Wee Tack. 21 17 now, and things getting a little bit more interesting. Four run deficit for Omaha with Father Burke Halter to the plate. If you can draw this one up, you might just want Burkhalter to walk and hope for a home run from Hazing. Hazing's warming up with two bats. This is going to get interesting. But first, Father Burkhalter's got to move the runners over. One way or another. He held that one without swinging, so 1 0 count. He's going to be a very patient hitter, I would bet. Thought about that one. That's going to go for a ball as well, so 2 0. Pressure caught upon Eikhoff right now to throw strikes. That is going to be swung on, and it's going to be dropped. We still might have a play at first. We won't. And so here we go. Bases loaded for Father Paul Hazing. It's a four-run game currently. Hazing needs a grand slam to tie it. And again, we don't know what's going to happen if they tie it, if we go to seven, if they call it a draw, or exactly what as the Lincoln Outfitters get all the way back to warning track type length in the outfield. Everybody knows the score right now in the in the stands. Here we go. Omaha down four. Their star player at the plate. Bates is loaded. Couldn't ask for a better outcome than this. If Father Hazing can put one out here, he will be an I-80 car series war for years. He actually, people might actually be legitimately asking for his autograph after this one. <laughs> Quick word between Harrison and Eikhoff. You can't walk the last hitter, so that's not an out for Lincoln. They got to throw him the strike. Omaha fans on their feet. Hazing watches the first one go by. No real hurry for him, waiting for his pitch. He's going to swing out of that one, and that's going to be... Hot by Father Cooper. And that's going to do it, everybody. Diocese of Lincoln wins their third in a row. 21 to 17 in front of a crowd of just under 4,000 4, at Hawksfield at Haymarket Park. What a game. Great job by both teams. The real winner here is vocations offices in both dioceses. What a tremendous day. Both teams congratulating each other in the center of the field. We have an MVP announcement. Still not exactly sure who it's going to be, and obviously we got to present the trophy as well. We did have a vote in here. We'll disclose that after the MVP is officially given out. For Lincoln, you could give it to several people. This is not a sure thing. If Omaha would have won, there was one guy you were really keying in on. But Lincoln, this was wide open. Yeah, you saw some great defense by both teams for Lincoln. I think Father Stoley out in left field was really good. Father Kipper at shortstop. Uh, both pitchers showed up today. Bishop Conley, of course, doing a good job keeping the runners off the base. Father Doty had a nice game. Had one hit at him that he lost in the sun. But just a tremendous effort by both teams. Absolutely. Getting a round of applause for all athletes right now. Well deserved on both sides. Omaha, you, you got to give it to them. They were the heavy underdog. Most people thought this would be a route for a third year in a row. And they made it interesting to the literal win. Dick Zerke, who put together this event this year with the Knights of Columbus, about to announce our MVPs. Who draws this up? I mean, 
giving a big ovation to the Archdiocese of Omaha coming down, giving a great effort today. So Kipper is going to grab the trophy. Lincoln takes it for a third year in a row. Bishop Father Kipper giving a big thank you to everybody while Bishop Conley gets his picture holding the trophy. I think Bishop Conley's pretty proud of that one. He didn't want thank it to you. leave their trophy case. <laughs> this year for the red team, most valuable player as voted by the press upstairs. You did a great job covering the game. Yes, these pictures up there. Father Doty. So it is Father, Father Craig Doty out of St. Lisa Class in Wilbur. Our Eight. vote matters, John. That was who we voted for. Great day at the plate for Father Doty, including those game-winning RBIs. And the Salvi <laughs> splash for Father Doty. That Father Kimenow won't be stopped. He runs over his own players. He might showers him at the end. From that collision at the fifth inning. <laughs> And so that is going to do it for the third annual I-80 Caller Series, this time in Lincoln, Nebraska. One more time, it was Lincoln 21, Omaha 17. Fantastic games from both sides. For Jeff Shenstock, my name is John Kipper. Thank you for watching. And one more time, Diocese of Lincoln wins this one 21-17. Have a great night, everybody.